We had a number of people this week that asked questions about how you would exclude data from a linear fit and thought it would be a good uh, time to go ahead and do a, do a demo to show you that. So first of all, I want to show you how quickly we can go ahead and do a fit of two columns. We have an X column and a Y column. I can go ahead and let's see, hit the fit command that's up in the toolbar. I fitted the data. Oh, I also want to plot the data so I can highlight those columns, hit the points command. Now you can see the points and you can see the linear fit through this data. Also quickly, if I wanted to say display the R square on the graph, I could go ahead and create a text command. And from the fit, I can extract out the R squared and that will show that on my figure. Now that I have that created, let's say I have some value that would appear to be an outlier from the rest of the data. There's one really kind of handy functionality that's included within the fit command itself. Now to, to see this a little clearer, I'm going to click this little icon to put my commands on the left hand side. And I'm going to open up the fit command. And notice that at the bottom here, there's this residual section. If you open this, it will show you a plot where we have on the x-axis each point, and on the y-axis you have the distance from the best fit line represented. And I can uh, click this little point here to remove possible outliers and fit it again. And notice that my r-squared changed when I did this, as well as the line itself also changed quite a bit. So let me toggle this on and off. You can see the impact of removing this particular outlier. I can also click on this button here to select my outliers in my table that highlighted the particular line. And so I know that any that when x is equal to 9, that's what this point is. Well, I, I can also just hover over it and see it if I have the hover turned on. But in any case, that's a way to help you to identify possible outliers that you might want to remove, but rather than relying completely on that uh, section that's in the command itself, if you wanted to then specify uh, do not use this point where x is equal to 9, one way to do that would be just to set a mask within the command itself. So we could say uh, use a mask when x is not equal to 9. And that's it. We've gone ahead and we've removed that individual value. If we had more than one value to remove, then let's say this is another outlier from my data set. I can, um, anywhere where I add a mask, I can also add a, a second line and go ahead and then say x is also not equal to, in this case, four. And then that removes this point from my, uh, from my fit. So that shows us how to how to remove uh, multiple individual points from a fit using using masks. Uh, I'd also like to show you what I how I prefer to represent masks. I tend to do this more when I'm using commands in a group. And to do that first, I need to go ahead and highlight my commands, and then I can click on this little group icon up in the top right hand corner that adds my group. And notice how this section here says shared mask. That allows me to create a mask where both of my um, commands have this particular mask. And I can do the same thing here. And now notice that the point is no longer drawn because it's masking for both of my commands, the fit command and the points command. The thing here is if I do have a lot of different masks that I need to add, then this could get to be kind of tedious because I have to add multiple lines here. What I tend to do in that situation is I'll add an additional column that allows me to flag when it's a mask and when it's not a mask. To do that, I'm going to first, uh, let's go ahead and switch back to my data being on the left-hand side. And I'll go ahead and open up my column definitions. And let's go ahead and add a, we'll just do a text column here, and we'll call this exclude. Move this up. And we can add in 
really anything we wanted to use. I'll just put an X value to indicate that I'd like to exclude these two columns from my fit. And let's go ahead and look at my fit command again. That allows me to change this mask from being two lines back to one line. And I can say exclude, oh, sorry, maybe back up. It would be when, yes, when exclude is not a match for X. Okay, there we go. And this is sort of nice because once I have that mask set up, I can control using the data table what is part of my regression and what is not part of my regression. I want to show you one more technique using a different data set. This is a file that I have here. If I hit the space bar, I can get a preview. This shows us the body size versus brain size for all these different animals. It's really kind of a cute data set. This is part of some of the R example data sets that are available. And if I take this file and drag it and drop it right onto the data table, then I get this list uh, imported into Datagraph. And let's go ahead and first give uh, that column a name. I don't necessarily need to see all that. But what I want to do here is to change my regression to be based on um, where X is body and Y is brain size. I did that first for my points. And notice how all of my data is uh, located down here at the origin. This is just indicating that this data is uh, spans a lot of orders of magnitude. And in order to actually see these points, we're going to go ahead and put this on a logarithmic scale. And sure enough, on that scale, you can kind of see that there's a relationship here between body and brain size. And we also see that there's these outlying points. First, let's go ahead and change my uh, regression here. Instead of being linear, I want this to be on a power basis. And also, I need to change it so it is, instead of being based on x and y, I'm going to change this to be based on the, the data that I have here. One way to do this is to uh, click on an item and hold down the command key and you can drag that selection from one command to another. That's a really quick way to change it. And sure enough, now I see this um, fit of the data on this scale. And uh, the R square here, notice that this is 0.7. And all the data is included, except I'm still using this exclude statement from this column that I created over here. Let's go ahead and put it next to our data. And uh, so first of all, I wouldn't want to use the way that I've excluded it from this other data set. What I want to exclude here are these three outline points, which are dinosaurs, which is why they're such outliers from the rest of our data set. But the, what I wanted to illustrate was how for a data set like this, where you start to have a lot of data, and this is still a relatively small data set, but even so, I can no longer see which items are being excluded from my regression by just looking quickly at this data table. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to change the way that I exclude it using a column that just identifies the name of the uh, particular species here that I'd like to remove from this data set. So to do that first, I can go ahead and open my column definitions. Let's hide the X data. I actually don't need this, this group here. I can delete that. And if I actually hide all of my data, I can go ahead and copy and paste directly the names here that I'd like to exclude. So I've highlighted these rows. I hit Command-C. And now I can hit Command-V and it just pastes them right in as a new column. And this is going to be my excluded names. Let's go ahead and show my data again. And now in my mask, I'm going to change this from exclude to actually using the name column. Let's show this so I can be a little clearer as to what's going on here. And whenever the name is not found in the column excluded name, it is not used in my regression. And you can see the impact here now. I'm back to a, an R square that's 0.92. And um, again, let me walk you through a little bit. This is a mass that's saying that whenever the column name does not include 
the items that are in this column called excluded name, then they're not used in my regression. Just another technique that you can use to create a mask on your data, and again, works well when you have a lot of data so that I can not only control this from my data table, but I can really specify in these columns, uh, use this as a way to control what rows are included or excluded. And so I hope this helps you come up with some ways to work with your data. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at help at visualdatatools.com.